How is everyone doing? Good. Good. I want to start off with a question. How long do you expect to live? Let's see a show of hands. If you plan to live more than 65 years, everybody. What about, keep your hands up, if you want to live more than 80 years? No change. But everybody wants to live past 80. What about if you want to live more than 100 years? Ooh, half the hands went down. Among people who still have their hands up, how many of you actually believe you will live more than 100? Ooh, very few. All right. Um, let me ask you a question, another question. Take a guess. If you were a person in China in the year 1960, what is the average life expectancy? Sixty. Yeah, think of a number in your mind. The number is 44. The average life expectancy in 1960 in China is only 44 years old. So back then, your lives would be halfway over or almost over. If you knew this, would you behave any differently? Maybe you have different priorities in life. Now take another guess. In the same year, 1960, what is the life expectancy in the United States? Ooh, you've been studying. It, it was 70 years old, that's right. So the gap between the United States and China was 26 years. Now, what about today? What is the life expectancy in China today? Very close. The number is 76 years old. Um, what about the United States? Very close. The number is 79 years old. So let's look at the map. From 1960 to 2016, China increased its life expectancy by 32 years, whereas the United States only increased its life expectancy by nine years. And the current gap between China and the US is only three years. And that number is going to become smaller and smaller over time. And I think in our lifetime, that number is going to reach zero. I guarantee you. Or you can make a bet. <laughs> So we are living longer than ever. We lowered infectious disease and famine, and we improved um, our income levels so that we have uh, more wealth, so that the life expectancies are increased. But what if you want to live longer? Many of you said you want to live more than 80 years old. What can we do to make this possible? So let's talk about longevity. And I want to start by telling you a story of a study that was started in 1998 by researchers from Duke University in the United States and Peking University in China. It was called the Chinese Longitudinal Healthy Longevity Survey. So it has a very long name, but it has a very interesting story. They interviewed people, a lot of people, 20,000 people above the age of 80, which they called the oldest old. They also interviewed over 5,000 people who were above the age of 100, also known as centenarians. It was the largest study of its, of its kind in the world to determine how we can live longer. So they conducted face-to-face -face interviews, meaning that they went into people's homes, and then they asked them questions regarding their socioeconomic factors, how much money they were making, their marriage history, their living arrangement, who they lived with, also their social connectedness, how many children they had, what kind of friends they had, and if they had any siblings. They also collected, most importantly, information on their health, including their physical function, their cognitive function, whether they have chronic diseases or not, and they also took blood samples. And this went on, they collected these information roughly every two years. And they went, they went on until today. So we have over two decades of data. There are a lot of information. 
So after 20 years of research, they produce hundreds and hundreds of research publications. And since I have a lot of time on my hands, I basically read all of them. <laughs> and I want to summarize for you the secrets of living to 100 years old. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Good. Secret number one is not a secret. It's winning the genetic lottery. People who lived until they were very old also had family members who lived until they were very old. However, recent studies have shown that genetic contribution to longevity is actually not that big. Some estimates say it's only 3%, some say it's 20%, some say it's fewer than 7%. So what this tells us is that our environment and behavior are the major contributors of longevity. Secret number two, gender. Women live longer. On average, women live five to six years longer uh, than men. In this audience, you probably are more likely to have a grandfather who passes away before your grandmother. But if you want to pass away at the same time as your spouse or partner, you should do the timing right and think about these life expectancies. How do you feel about that? So why do women live longer? It's a complicated question with complicated answers, but it may be hormonal and genetic advantages that women have over men. Yes, there are advantages. But also men engage in riskier lifestyle, including smoking and drinking, and also higher risk occupations. Secret number three, marriage can help you. Because marriage helps with social integration, you have more friends. It helps with greater reinforcement of healthy behavior. You monitor your partner to make sure they're not eating too much junk food or watching too much TV. <laughs> and it also leads to more economic resources, because people can share and they can make more money. In this study, marriage was shown a lower death rate by 47%, even more than having children. Having children lowers death rate by about 4%. Also, interestingly, men benefit more from marriage than women. And nobody knows why, but we think it's because in traditional families, women usually do more work. Another secret is having social circles. Social interaction promotes longevity. However, we found an interesting story. At age 80, those who engage in social activity have a 19% lower risk of mortality. By age 95, that number goes down to 7%. And at age 95, that number actually goes to zero. Above the age of 95, those who are very, very old, social interaction is actually harmful to people's health. And we think that's because at a very uh, old age, you should invest your limited resources, your attention, to those you really care about, to the intimate relationship. The next one is perhaps one that you heard of, which is staying active. Staying active helps people live longer. And the investigators of this study measured activity by called activities of daily living, things people do on a daily basis, such as eating, taking a bath, getting dressed, uh, going to the toilet, getting into bed, or moving around. We want to help the elderly population with this, but surprisingly, those who received little or no help maintain these capabilities longer and that allowed them to live a longer life. So here's the message. Do more things yourself, especially basic things. How many hours of sleep did you get last night? Four. 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 Uh, seven. Nine. Nine. Pretty good. We all know that sleeping and resting is essential to good health. And studies found that people who sleep fewer than six hours 
have higher mortality rates and worse health. But surprisingly, those who slept more than 10 hours have even worse health outcomes. So don't sleep too much. The optimum time for sleeping is seven to nine hours. Eating vegetables are extremely important, and study after study have demonstrated the more intake you have vegetables and fibers can help you uh, elongate your life. However, eating vegetables that are salt-preserved increases your sodium intake. And your sodium intake causes hypertension and cardiovascular disease. And they found that those who uh, ate salted vegetables occasionally or daily have a 10% higher risk of mortality. We're almost there. Where you live matters. Because the environment has a huge impact on our health. In this study, they found that the median uh, PM2.5 concentration was 50 micrograms per cubic meter. And for each 10 unit increase of PM2.5, mortality rate increases 8%. So air pollution has proven to be bad for health. However, you may be able to counteract this with greenness, because greenness uh, promotes exercise and gives you a better mental well-being, and that actually allows you to live longer. Here is the last secret. And that secret is optimism. After the age of 65, people's physical function and their cognitive function decline linearly, sometimes exponentially. However, their satisfaction in life doesn't change, or it may not change. And this study found that even when your physical and cognitive function decline, if you have higher optimism, higher sense of personal control, and positive feelings about yourself, you will live longer. Negative emotions such as loneliness, anxiety, or feeling of incompetence lowers life expectancy. They used to say laughter is the best medicine. In this case, we can see that optimism surely increases longevity. All right, so we are living longer than ever. But are we living better? If you just look at the headlines of life, life expectancy, you might think we have an astonishing achievement in making the average life expectancy very high. But these extra years are not necessarily in good health. This is from the latest Global Burden of Disease study. On this side, we can see the highest cause of death in 1990. And on the other side, we see the highest cause of death in 2017. So we have new challenges, and the new challenges for the elderly population are hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes. In younger populations, our new challenges are mental issues and lower back pain from working in an office or sitting in a chair for a long period of time. So we can live longer and better only if we can tackle these challenges. Longevity is the greatest achievement in the modern era. And I believe people in this room can live to the age of 80 because you were born in the right place at the right time. But if you want to live to 100, you need to make a strategy today. Thank you.